What was supposed to be a consummation of a sweetheart deal for Hunter Biden to get away with not paying taxes on millions of dollars in illicit income and deep sixing a felony gun charge too turned into a potential nightmare for Hunter and more importantly for the sitting president of the United States, Joe Biden and his entire family. It's being shown now with more and more evidence to have profited greatly by selling the family name to the highest bidder and selling you and me in America down the road. David Weiss, the U.S. attorney for Delaware, who's going to much scrutiny after announcing that after five years of investigation, alleged investigation of Hunter Biden, that the best he could do was a couple of misdemeanors for tax evasion on more than $2.2 $2.2 million in unpaid money. That's $2.2 million that he did not pay. The income was millions of dollars. Then a diversion program for a 10-year felony for lying on the FBI firearm background check, which, by the way, the Brady gun safety bill was pushed through in 1993 and shepherded through by who? Joe Biden. That's correct. But Hunter, he said he didn't use the illegal drugs, bought the gun during that time anyway when he was addicted to crack, hookers, and apparently underage girls, too. That, according to evidence that has been found on his infamous laptop and written in his memoir. But a funny thing happened on the way to the court in that sweetheart plea deal. Justice showed up and shot the whole thing down. U.S. District Judge Mary Ellen Norieka started asking questions of both the prosecutors and the defense lawyers. And that's when the biggest cherry on top ever came tumbling out. You see, the judge asked the prosecutors if more charges were possible in the case, and they said yes. Then she asked if the investigation was still going on, and again, David Weiss and company said yes. To which the defense attorneys, including the Sugar Brother lawyer for Hunter Chris Clark, you know, that's the guy that was out on his balcony doing bong hits a couple of days ago in Los Angeles, You remember that picture, right? He chimed in and said he didn't agree with that. So one of the other lead prosecutors said there was no deal on the table, and Clark called the matter null and void. Now think about this. It seems when they walked into court, Hunter Biden and his team actually thought, not only are we getting the deal of the century and something not available to the general public for felony tax evasion and felony gun possession and lying to the FBI on our background check, but... We're going to walk out of here with blanket immunity, too. Wow. They thought they had blanket immunity going forward. Well, what they got was a cold shot of reality because the judge said that, well, that's not going to happen. Then she tipped her cards even more. She asked Hunter if he knew he had evaded paying millions of dollars in taxes. You know what his answer was? Yes. Then asked the prosecution if Hunter violated FARA laws, if that was on the table. And they said, yes. Fair laws require somebody working for a foreign company to to register as a foreign agent. If you're making money or working in a capacity to represent a foreign company or a foreign entity, you have to register as a foreign agent, which Hunter never did. That should bring Paul Manafort to mind. That's how they got Paul Manafort and jammed him up because he was friends with Donald Trump. He got charged with felonies. He got sent to jail. But we know now through the whistleblowers from the IRS that Hunter Biden earned at least $17.3 million from such endeavors outside the country, never registered. And those whistleblowers may have waited heavily on this case and on the judge as well.